I tried to get in on the other computer and I couldn't get into the other com the other computer. I tried to get into the other computer once before and it didn't work then either. Is it because I forwarded the social solidarity to it, do you think? I have no idea. Me. I don't know, but anyway. Well, I'm here. This is well above my pay grade. Mm -hmm. My, to, to, my to camera is not working questions. either. Whoa. Oh, sorry, Judy. I'm, but we're I'm glad to see that you're here. Maybe, maybe if, we all, if we all meditate on Judy and Vita, we can make them appear. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to leave at 11.45 because I have a client at noon. But um, So if I disappear, that's what's going on. That's just fine. Well, I'm all very delighted that you are all here. And we will get started. Um, hmm. So good morning. So we have been talking about um, the value of reading Psalm 27 on a daily basis as preparation for the high holidays. And we've been specifically exploring Sheila Pels Weinberg's interpretation. So I invite you to sit back and listen to these words once again as I read her interpretation of Psalm 27 um, for the last time for this group. Awareness is sunlight in the mind. No one can take that from me. Awareness is my life's stronghold. It absorbs all fear. The hindrances and defilements are as close as my flesh and mind but they dissolve in the light of being known. Even though I feel assaulted by hostile forces, my heart remains confident, balanced, and patient. I seek only one thing, one thing alone, to connect to this moment. Nowhere else, only this, nothing less. My palace in time. When difficulties arise, I have a hiding place in my own heart, a secret tent where I can go and feel safe, a rock to rest my head upon. Greed, hatred, and delusion don't stop coming. But when they are met with a spacious heart, they don't stick around, leaving me so grateful, I want to sing out loud. Listen, world. The power of love sets me free. When I turn to face my heart, then everyone and everything is revealed. Let this truth not be hidden from me. If only I could remember always what seems so clear right now, wisdom would guide my every moment. Awareness and compassion would be a father and a mother to me but I can follow the guidance of those who have walked this path before, trying to stay alert to the obstacles along the way because delusion and hatred aren't disappearing so fast. Still, I affirm my faith in the power of goodness. May we take courage, may we be strong, may our hearts be so filled with love there is no room for anything else. May we see the arising and passing of all conditioned things. May we open to the unconditioned Yudhe Bhavhe. So we have spent time unpacking the first stanza, focusing on awareness. And last week, we looked at the middle stanza, focusing on having a spacious heart and the notion that the power of love sets us free. So today, I want to focus on the last stanza. Actually, just the first couple of lines of the last stanza. May we take courage, may we be strong, may our hearts be so filled with love there is no room for anything else. 
I think that courage and strength of character, not brute strength, um, require self-love. And I'm using the word love in a very broad kind of general way. It's caring, concern, that kind of thing. I'm not talking romantic love. And I'm not talking that egocentric kind of love. So I know for myself, when I have a, a sense of confidence and an appreciation for my abilities, I'm much more likely to push myself to try something new. It takes courage to try something new, to do something that's unfamiliar, to allow yourself to be vulnerable, to push the edges of my comfort zone. All of that takes courage. And I think that that takes self-love. I also believe that self-love includes self-respect. I think love includes respect. Um, and I think that that's necessary before we can love and respect others. So something happened during our discussion last week. Um, Larry reminded me of love shots. And I have been sitting with my love shots ever since. Um, and I thank you, Larry, for the reminder. So most of us don't notice or take in the love that's all around us. For example, the smile of a stranger when eyes lock for a split second when you're walking. And in the time of COVID, when we're all walking masked, we're not seeing those smiles. So people have found other ways to smile at each other. It's a flip of a hand, it's a quick wave, it's a nod. But that's happening too. Are we taking those in? Are we noticing them? Are we noticing the love shots in a store? When the clerk or the person who's checking out your groceries in the grocery store wishes you to have a nice day. That's a blessing and that's a love shot. So I think that these kinds of really small gestures are saying, I notice you, you matter, you are important, I wish you well, and these are all love shots. So the combination of Larry's comment and this line from Psalm 27, may our hearts be so filled with love there is no room for anything else, dovetailed for me. And um, what I'm going to do today is lead us through a guided meditation um, that I have led before and some of you have heard it before, but this is one of those things that I don't think you can get too much of. So this is a meditation about being open to receiving love because we need to get filled up before we can give. At least that's my, my view of things. So I invite you to sit in a relaxed position right now and bring to mind some of the gestures for love and wishes for your well being that you have experienced. I'm going to ask you to be really specific. See if you can recall someone from your childhood who you just loved being near because they made you feel so good. And this is not a full relationship that I'm asking you to conjure up. I'm asking you to conjure up a moment in time because all relationships are complicated. So don't get stuck on 
well, this moment was terrific with that person, but then such and such and such and such happened. No, no, no stories, no noise, just a brief moment in time when you really felt appreciated, loved, that this other being could be a person, could be a pet, only wanted what was best for you, only wanted you to be happy and delighted. So we're not thinking about perfect people or perfect relationships or perfect experiences even. We're thinking about moments. Think about people throughout your life, relatives, friends, teachers, mentors. Maybe the cafeteria worker or the crossing guard at school. People who simply by their gesture, smile, or simple presence gave you the message that you were valued and loved. Their wish was for your well-being and happiness. I refer to these people and pets as benefactors. So picture these benefactors smiling at you and notice how you feel in the moment as you do so. Feel this in your body. As you re-experience loving moments. So now sitting in a relaxed and alert position, thinking of one or more of your benefactors. Those people and pets that bring a smile to your lips and maybe um, a sense that your heart is smiling too. And remember, you're only being asked to come up with a moment where you are feeling so deeply loved and important and cared for. I'm going to feel that in your body. more than one benefactor may come to mind. And that's absolutely fine. And more than one instant might come to mind. And that's also fine. So keep this benefactor or multiple benefactors in your mind's eye and see that smiling face and imagine 
this benefactor is sending you the wish of love, the wish for your deepest well-being, happiness, and joy. When your mind wanders, see if you can envelop the distraction in your benefactor's love and breathe this energy into your heart space. Allow yourself to open to the love that is being sent to you. You can even, if you choose, imagine this wish as a gentle radiance, like a soft shower of sparkling healing energy. Bask in the loving energy of this wish. Trust the wish of love and the wish for your well being. If you start feeling really full that your heart is so filled with love that there's no room for anything else, then allow that love to begin to radiate out toward others. You might want to imagine your benefactor behind you sending love to you and someone you want to share this loving with can be in front of you and you can allow that love to flow from your benefactor through you and toward the person or pet in front of you. As you fill to overflowing with love, you may share that love in ever expanding circles.
as we are gently emerging from our meditation, I'm going to read a poem by Naomi Shabib, uh, Shahib, I'm sorry, Nai, So Much Happiness. It is difficult to know what to do with so much happiness. With sadness, there is something to rub against, a wound to tend with lotion and cloth. When the world falls in around you, you have pieces to pick up, something to hold in your hands, like ticket stubs or change. But happiness floats. It doesn't need you to hold it down. It doesn't need anything. Happiness lands on the roof of the next house singing and disappears when it wants to. You are happy either way. Even the fact that you once lived in a peaceful tree house and now live over a quarry of noise and dust cannot make you unhappy. Everything has a life of its own. It too could wake up filled with possibilities of coffee cake and ripe peaches and love even the floor which needs to be swept, the soiled linens and the scratched records. Since there is no place large enough to contain so much happiness, you shrug, you raise your hands, and it flows out of you into everything you touch. You are not responsible. You take no credit, as the night sky takes no credit for the moon, but continues to hold it and share it, and in that way be known. So we will turn off the recording and